Me personally, you know, I don't really have an opinion one way or the other on the whole situation. Um, you know, it, it is strange, though, because they are trying to push a lot of that uh, that environmentalism thing like that. And like a lot of the things, you know, so my regular profession, I'm a mechanical designer and I see a lot a lot of these uh, agenda type driven things where they're, you know, where all these sustainability, this, that and the other. And I work for an architecture firm. And so a lot of that stuff's mandated into code right now. So I find it uh, funny that he's trying to implement all these uh policies uh, on the whole 2030 plan like that that all coexist with this kind of stuff and i think the uh, point was is that you know buildings and stuff consume like 40 percent of uh you know or we're supposedly contribute 40 percent of all greenhouse gases so i think that's you know it kind of as far as like my my personal profession it kind of relates in some way to that hmm. that's very interesting and um so I guess getting you're a, a 32 degree mason what does it take and if you can answer this what does it take to get to, to be a 33 degree mason well, to get to the 33rd degree like that, so that you have like there's uh, basically there's like the honorary and then the active. The active actually uh, is within the uh, within the uh, governing body of the Scottish Rite itself. And then the honorary, you know, maybe someone has served to put in a lot of time, like maybe they've done a lot of stuff for their local valley, you know, different things like that. Um, the point is like that it's kind of like one of those things of ambition. Like if one was to seek after it, one's not going to get it. But, you know, just by doing your part like that, if you're deemed worthy like that, then, you know, you, you, you ascend to this degree. But it, but for all intents and purposes, unless you're in the uh, governing structure itself like that, it's an honorary degree. An honorary degree. Now, yes. I've heard there's deg degrees above the 33 degree. Do you do you uh, agree with that? Sure. Yeah, that's called the right of Memphis Miserium, and it's uh, by in, by U.S. standards today like that is considered a regular. And so they have uh, degrees up to ninety whatever, and you know it's, it's nothing that's really practiced very commonly here in the states, and it originates in France. Um, and it's even over there, it's not all that popular. Well, it's not that popular because I guess a lot of people don't know about it. Because um, everybody that if you talk to a lot of Masons, they seem to say thirty three degrees is the top, and there is no. There. Uh, so why do people think that the beyond the 33 degrees where it gets uh, into Satanism? Uh, well, I don't know. I think a lot of it is just like speculation and that sort of thing. Um, a lot of the uh, ideas about Freemasonry and Satanism and things like that, they cause this uh, guy, and I can't even think of his name right now, but – um, it was back in the 1880s, and he uh, he put out a bunch of series of hoaxes like that. And so, like a lot of the things that we have today, they get repeated in the early teens and 20s. Um, it basically goes back to this thing where he, he uh, Leo Taxel, that's the guy's name, and he was a famous hoaxer. And so he writes all these ridiculous things, mainly to shame the Catholic Church. And ultimately, a lot of it's for nothing. But you know, what's funny is like with uh, you know with, with the fictional narratives and stuff like that. Sometimes they kind of carry on. People pick up those ideas and threads and kind of run with them. And to where we get to the point today, where you know some people associate Freemasonry with Satanism, and you know, in point of fact, it's really just like a club for self improvement. Yeah, in your in your book, it actually talks about how. Um uh, the Masons want, it, it says, it, it's inter interesting, and I'm paraphrasing, but it says we, in every major city, we want a Freemasonry Lodge set up where we have uh, wealthy men, men of influence in there together, but they don't really know our true purpose. What What is the true purpose? What are they What are they referring to? Well, so if you look at like what the uh, the goals and the objectives were for the Illuminati, it was to basically install a strict moral regimen on society to raise humanity up. And the thing is, you know, they, they talk about in their correspondence and their uh, ritual texts like that, that not every person is capable of doing this. And really, like within the context of like controversy, the real like legacy of the Illuminati is it, they had less of an influence in like political matters and more within the secret society realm. Right. So what they were doing was is um, they would. If they didn't start one of these lodges, they would take over a lodge basically by getting their people elected to the officers' positions and thereby securing the funds of the lodge because the Illuminati itself had a rather poor funding mechanism. So it was essential, you know, one, to gain control of these lodges because it has a new field for uh, recruiting for membership. And even more importantly, um, the funds like that were now at their dispense. And so it was a, a convenient institution basically for them to to operate behind. And also like, you know, so, so there's a funding arm of it and there's also like a recruiting arm of that for what, what they were trying to do there. So the Masons are very, they have a, a, a better funding mechanism set up than the Illuminati. They seem to, they pass yes. the hat more essentially. 
Yeah, so the Illuminati, really, they're descended from this group called the Rite of Strict Observance, which were strictly observing a Templar origin of Freemasonry. And so what basically what it, it gets down to is that uh, the strict observance was more like a utopian top-down type thing, where they have high degree fees, high member dues, and so forth like that. It's a very expensive thing to join, whereas the Illuminati were more of a utopian bottom-up type uh, system, You know, both operating within Freemasonry. And so the strict observance goes into terminal decline with the death of their founder. And so the Illuminati take advantage of the situation. And that's where most of the members of the Illuminati come from is from the strict observance. And so as a consequence of these really expensive degree fees, and if you're trying to institute something from bottom up instead of top down, you've got low degree fee structures, right? So on the bottom levels of the Illuminati, they weren't really paying dues or didn't have very many uh, things to contribute financially to it. It was more like on the honor system, whereas in with Masonic lodges, there's prescribed degree fees and, and that sort of thing. That's very interesting. So I guess if you're allowed to even say this, how, how much does it cost to get to the 32 or 33 degree? Uh, well, it, it, it varies, right? So mm -hmm. when you're when you're in uh, Freemasonry today, you have like what's called the symbolic lodge, and the symbolic lodge, um, you know, the first three degrees like that. There's a you know, it varies from place to place, but you know, it probably wouldn't be any more than like two hundred dollars like per degree, and. and Yep. become a master mason you can join what's called appendant bodies and these appendant bodies um you know it depends you can go york right scottish right the shrine and so mm -hmm. forth and to join these things like that they each have their own degree fee structures and so it's, it, it it varies on what you're trying to do but in addition to having degree fees there's also like annual dues and it's not anything extreme or anything like that you know never more than like 100 bucks generally speaking so i mean it's 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 kind of like a country club dues or something like that. Like you have to pay like an application fee and then like you pay like, you know, to maintain your membership. Mm -hmm. uh, I, would, so I would like to intervene at all. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Leo. Uh, uh, history. I mean, we have amongst historians. So Joseph knows me very well and knows that I talk correctly when I say, first of all, the strict observance which gave later birth to the Illuminati was for many historians a Jesuit creation. And this is not my words, but the words of some very eminent Masonic historians. The Illuminati itself have inside a character which actually Joseph wrote about in the book, which is called Marotti, which later became secretary to a pope, which actually supposed to have uh, helped them write their Masonic degrees of destruction. The Illuminati, having said that, finished, ended up. But what happened is that other people used the system. And later on, Joseph knows very well, uh, they were they tried to revive the Illuminati in the 1880s. And later on, uh, out of that uh, circle of people was, was born the Ordo Tempi Orientis, uh, in which uh, arrived Alistair Crowley. I mean, then uh, things took a darker, much darker turn than at the time of Adam Weishaupt. So uh, it's erroneous to say there is an order of the Illuminati today that uh, reflects Adam Weishaupt uh, and that has this lineage uh, continuously transmitted because then the Illuminati simply appeared under different names. Uh, this is what has happened and it was actually denounced already in the 1880s by an author which was himself uh, a very high initiate of the Rose Cross which was called Stanislaw de Guaita who um, started to denounce that maybe the intentions that Joseph has put through in his book, and even Joseph has mentioned at the beginning of his interview, are quite noble, some of the intentions of the Illuminati. The problem is that after they got corrupted, and they use the system, and you can study the system of the Illuminati, because then it reflects many of the systems of power that were mm -hmm. used later on, uh, not only uh, within secret societies, but also by governments. Like communism has a lot to do with the Illuminati, for example. That's why Spartacus, the first communist group in Germany, uh, was called Spartacus, because Spartacus was the initiatic name of Adam Weishaupt. And, and, and so, and at the same time, even the two legations stuff or those kind of secret societies involved with politics that gave birth to Nazism had a lot to do with the Illuminati, because they took this idea that you can do politics in a secret society. While he said the Freemasons, like Joseph said, should be about self-improvement. But uh, having said that, 
There is also many rights of Freemasonry, and of course there is rights of Freemasonry that have nothing to do with uh, what happens in the blue degrees in the symbolic lodge. It's much more to do with occultism, and this mm. occultism, and I'm sure, Joseph, you have to admit that, there is many Satanists that take advantage of Freemasonry to recruit other people, even in Texas these days. Uh, I could, I could uh, believe that. I got a couple quick questions for you guys. Um, but you, no, Joseph, I would like to yeah. elaborate if you can on this one. You guys there? Okay. Yeah, Joseph, do you want to elaborate real quick? And then I got a couple quick questions that people are tweeting in that are really interested to know. Sure thing. So I, like, I think yeah. you guys cut out just for the last a couple of seconds. Can you repeat that again for me? Uh, what what yeah, was go ahead, asked yeah. to Joseph was basically, if you could elaborate on the fact that the many Satanists still these days are taking advantage of the Masonic structure to recruit for their infamous sex that have nothing to do with the craft, but have to be condemned. And unfortunately, the Grand Lodges of Freemasonry have not done so. And even Robert Gilbert, in his uh, essay, Apologies uh, of a Freemason, had to admit that they are in growing numbers, Satanist people like uh, Telemic from the OTO, they are infiltrating Freemasonry left, right, and center, and they are abusing it. Now, this can't be permitted. How can you rent a lodge of respectable people, a Freemason lodge, to a group that does a satanic mass with a naked woman on the altar? This is, for me, <laughs> jo Joseph, how do you uh, respond to that? No, he, he's, he's, he's right. There are definitely uh, occult-type orders like that mm -hmm. that are definitely trying to operate within the side of the context of Freemasonry, you know, much in the same way that the Illuminati were looking for fields of recruitment within the same deal, and that's exactly, you know, it's a parallel-type situation, actually. Okay, well, I got two quick questions for you. When I was at Bilderberg, I was on uh, top of a mountain, actually, shooting uh, video footage of the hotel because we couldn't get anywhere near it because these guys were having a private meeting, uh, all, all the most rich and powerful people in the world. Um, while I was there, I had a 1776 hat on and there was a German guy who rode his bike all the way down to, uh, to Austria to see what was going on. And he said, you know, 1776, that's when the Illuminati started. Do you think there is a correlation between the Illuminati starting and, uh, the United States declaring its independence? No, and so it's it's for separate reasons, right? So with the uh, it's two isolated fields. So like the uh, first few years of the Illuminati's life from 1776 to 78, they only had ten members, right? So it's like the it's the this college professor and his pupils that he's mentoring to make the secret school of wisdom. But and Joseph, Joseph, the fact is that the Rosicrucians were the real Illuminati, as you know, and were called the real Illuminati, and they preceded the 1776, and they yes. were. Uh, very important in the foundation of the United States of America. So while we can say that the order of Bishop have nothing to do, it's uh, partly uh, true, though, that the real Illuminati, the ones who even helped out Bishop himself, because Knigne belonged to those people, were the ones who helped founding the USA. So we have to be honest about certain things. Well, no, we're, like, we're, yeah, uh, which Illuminati are we talking about, right, Leo? <laughs> absolutely. That's why yeah. we have to have people like me and Joseph explaining you this vast world, which takes really years to, to understand because it's so compartmentalized, so hierarchically speaking, very complex, which I think we are doing a great thing today during Money Bomb to help people understand more. No, Joseph? Yeah. Well, hey, before we get to that, uh, let me just let me just announce a couple things since you mentioned the Money Bomb. Uh, which you're watching right now, Infowars.com forward slash Money Bomb. Steve from Las Vegas just donated $1,000. He's entered into that oh. drawing. We're giving away a really nice gun from Head Down. Uh, it's going to be uh, for people who donate $1,000 or more get into a raffle. Also, we have Robert G., uh, Betty M., and Gary R. Gary donated a 500 and then uh, Betty and Robert donated 1000 And uh, we also have Brian, who went through PayPal, did $4,000. Thank you very much, Brian S., Margaret M., another thousand. And then we've got, you know, a plethora of 500, 250, $200 donations. And uh, the, the uh, rocket is getting fueled up to launch us to the next, to the next strat, to the stratosphere. And actually, we're going to be launched, we're launching a satellite network with all this. Uh, here's another question from Twitter, guys. Uh, how about, or does, does, uh, this is for Joseph and, okay. um, and Leo. Do you expect that the 33rd degree Masons are going to have special access to get with the Pope and actually meet with him, confer him? Do you think there will be some special meeting, maybe even some sort of mass uh, just with 33rd degree Masons? And is the Pope a Mason? I, I don't know that, honestly. So that's for my own 
Okay, so if I can start off, uh, Go ahead. no, he's probably not a Mason, and I'm pretty sure we'll have to stand in line just like everybody else. But the thing is, is like, you know, you know, I think people make a lot more out of like the 33rd degree and being a Scottish Rite Mason. It's it's not it's not the elite glamorous club that people think it is. It's just uh, it's you know, it's it's mainly it's like what we call like the University of Freemasonry. So a lot of your academically say, minded people go there. I can't say one thing. Uh, to Joseph Joseph knows it that within the 33rd degree. From time to time, they recruit a lot of knights because, for example, in the Supreme Council here in Rome, the Pope has at least five knights of the order of the Holy Sepulchre among the Supreme Council recognized by Washington. So uh, there is a structure here which 